Slack is the best way for teams of all sizes to communicate and get work done. Some of that is in direct messages, but most of it is in channels. Today, we're gonna to dig into channels and see what makes them so cool. Hello everyone and welcome back to Slack School. My name is Mike Reynolds. I'm part of the Slack team here at Salesforce and I'll be your host. Today we're gonna to be talking about channels. We're gonna look at exactly what a channel is, how we can use them to stay organized, and we'll get into some best practices. Let's get after it. What is a channel? Well, a channel is a large collection of different elements. And the easiest way to see what it is, is to just go make one. So let's do that. I can create a channel by hovering over the channels section and then clicking these three dots for more actions. Then I get this create, create channel and create section. We're gonna start by making a channel. Now, this screen is gonna show me a couple of different templates that I can use to get started a little bit quicker than creating everything by hand. But a basic channel is just this. It's a blank channel and you have the option to add different tabs. But let's look at some of these templates. This first one's one of my favorites, the Project Starter Kit. This comes with the Messages tab, as you'd expect, but it also comes with this canvas that's a project overview. Now, a canvas is essentially like a shared Word document that everybody can type in, or a, a Google Sheet type of deal. It also comes with this Project Tracker. The Project Tracker is a really, really neat tool for being able to keep tabs on everything that my team is supposed to be working on. This is using a feature called a list. It also comes with different workflows. These are types of automations. We'll cover workflows in another episode later. Now, I might not want all of these, so I could deselect them if I wanted to. For now though, let's build a blank channel. Now, the first thing we wanna do is give our channel a name. It's really, really important here that we adopt a naming convention. A naming convention is just a standard that everybody is gonna follow. And if everybody follows it and sticks to it, then we always kind of have a basic level of understanding on why the channel exists because it was named in a certain way. We're gonna call this demo dash Slack School. The next thing we need to do is we need to set the channel's visibility. Let's start with private. Private is a really easy model to use. When things are private, if you're not a member of the channel, you don't have access to anything that's inside that channel. That also means that if you search in the global search bar that's at the top of Slack, you will not find anything about the channel because it's private. If you leave the channel, even messages that you posted to the channel are no longer available to you because it's private and you're not in the channel anymore. Public is the exact opposite. In public channels, I can search for information at the top and I can join the channel if I'm not already a member. Now, this is really, really helpful. Ideally, you want as much information as possible in public channels. And the reason for this is that your company has essentially been building through sending all of these messages. It's building up a large knowledge base that's just unstructured text, but that unstructured text has answers to so many questions that people may have. And you can find those answers by searching at the top of Slack. If all of your channels are private, you're lowering the amount of information that's available. Certainly some channels will need to be private, things that are not ready for everybody in your organization to see. But most of our information should be shared with everybody. And so if the content is going to be safe for everybody to see, we should make it public. The next thing we need to do is add people. Since this is a demo environment, I don't need to worry about this for now, but it's a good idea to add people that you know are gonna be active in the channel. Once we've created a new channel, there's a bunch of things that we can do. I'm gonna start off by clicking on the name of the channel at the top. Setting your notifications is really important. You wanna make sure that you're being notified in the way that you want. We've got options here. This is gonna be just for the Slack channel you're in, or you can come down here and change your Slack preferences for all of your channels. That's really important because you don't want Slack to become too noisy. The next thing that you can do is you can see all of the members. 
I am logged in as Phineas McFinance, that's me, I'm the only member of this channel. I can also see if I've added any agents. Now I have not added any agents, so there are none listed here. I can see the tabs that I've created, which so far I haven't created any. I can see any integrations that are here, and I can look at the overall settings. One of the settings that I wanna point out to everybody is posting permissions. You can change who can post in a channel, and this is really important because sometimes I want a channel to be what we call broadcast. That's like a company-wide announcements channel. There's probably a small subset of people who can post in the company-wide announcements channel. Other people could respond to those messages in the thread, but they can't make new messages of their own. That's a great option for a lot of situations. The other thing that we wanna do is understanding at here and at channel. If you use at here, you're going to push a notification to everybody that's currently online and is a member of the channel. There's one step you can go stronger than that. If you've got an announcement that is so important, you wanna tell everybody whether they're online right now or not, you use at channel. The last thing that we wanna know about the channel menu is how to find the channel's ID. The ID is located here at the bottom. I'll show you that one more time. If we're here, we can click on the name, scroll to the bottom, that's where you'd find the channel ID, and then this little icon there will copy that channel ID. You'll probably need that later when we're looking at different ways of automating things. When we made this, we didn't add any tabs, but tabs are super cool, let's add some now. I've got this little plus icon. I can click on this and I can choose to add a canvas, a list, workflows if I'd like, a folder, or a link. And I'm gonna start with a folder. I really, really love having folders. I'm gonna call my folder important stuff because that's what it is. It's very important stuff. What I can do with a folder is add lots of different types of things. I could choose to upload a file. I could add a canvas or a list, a link to a different website, which could be anything that is a URL, or I could add a file. I'm gonna upload a file. Now it's gonna make sure that I'm okay with the current sharing settings. Do I want this to be available to everybody that's in this? I'm gonna say yes. And now this logo is available to anybody who's in this channel, even if they get added later. And that's a very handy way to make sure that my resources are always available. The last thing we wanna talk about with channels is how to organize them. So in this demo, I don't have very many channels, but in the Slack community workspace, I've got several. I can jump into the Slack community workspace by hovering over this icon in the top left and then choosing other workspaces that I've logged into. This is the Slack community workspace. Now I'm in the Slack community workspace. This is a lot more busy than that demo environment that I was in. I need to arrange this so that it's more organized and it's more usable for me. So what I can do is create a section for my channels. Again, I'm gonna go to more actions, create and create section. Now here, I get to set an emoji if I'd like and a title for what I want this section to be. So I'm gonna choose a custom emoji. I'm gonna choose this Slack icon and I'm gonna create a section called Slack. Now. There's a lot of different channels that all have the Slack prefix, and I'm gonna start moving some of them into this Slack section. All I need to do to move them is just drag and drop. And I can take all of the channels that I, I want about Slack and move them in there. Now, you've also got the starred section. Starred is really for the channels that you wanna always pay attention to. Now, I know that there is a channel for Slack School, so I'm gonna go ahead and look for one. Now, you'll notice when I, typed in, when I typed in Slack School up here, it found me and it's found a channel that I'm not in. So I'm gonna click on this and it's asking if I wanna join this channel. Well, I certainly do. So I'm gonna join this channel. I'll say hello. 
Now, I wanna organize this channel. I've got a couple of different options here. I could drag it up into this Slack section, but I really want it to be in my important one. So I'm gonna drag and go all the way up into the starred section because this is really important. I wanna pay attention to what happens in here. And then these other channels sections, if I don't wanna necessarily look at them, I can shrink them, which is an easy way to do that. Now, if I don't like the order of these, I can rearrange the whole channel sections just by dragging and dropping. Well, there you have it. Why don't you jump into the Slack community workspace, join the Slack school channel and tell me what you thought, or tell me what you want to see in another episode. I hope you learned a lot and we'll see you next time. Oh, hey, really proud of you. You did a great job today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now today we're going to be taking a look at Salesforce channels. And today we're going to be talking about Salesforce. I can't say Salesforce channels. It's not Salesforce channels. That's a separate product. I can't say Salesforce channels because that's not what we're taking a look at. That's next week. <laughs>